Hey everybody, I don't know about you guys, but for Katie and I, when we find a good piece of reclaimed wood or rusty metal, there's just something about the history behind it that can really help tell a story throughout our design. Now the problem is, is that sometimes when you're looking for a specific item, like if you're in an RV and you require specific dimensions or weight, it can be kind of difficult. And then maybe you do find it and then you realize really quick that it's a little bit out of your budget. Well, over the last couple of years, Katie and I have played around with a few different techniques on taking newer items and giving them that kind of vintage vibe. And that's what we're going to show you today is how we found this easy process in order to give a rusty patina to newer metal. Now, to give you a little history, uh, a little over a year ago, we were looking to create a horseshoe shelf in our bathroom so that we could hold our towels or toilet paper or, you know, whatever other bathroom essentials you need back there. And what was really cool is we had some reclaimed wood on hand. It was actually pulled out of an old building from the 1850s and was given to us from the owner of the wedding venue where we got married. Now the problem was is that we didn't have the vintage horseshoes. So we were on kind of a time crunch and we started looking around locally and we found some really cool old history driven horseshoes. But the problem was is that they were always a little bit too heavy or there weren't quite enough of them because we needed four. So being on the time crunch, we finally just caved, went to the local hardware store and picked up some new horseshoes, uh, focus on lightweight horseshoes, uh, brought them home, tried this, uh, applied this technique and it worked great. And now we have an awesome vintage looking horseshoe shelf in our bathroom. Now, before we dive into what you're going to need to get this done and how you're going to go about doing it, we do want to touch on a couple safety notes. <laughs> So for this project, we're using basic household products. Uh, all of them individually are non-toxic. However, when you mix products together, sometimes you can get a chemical reaction. So because of that, we're going to be wearing gloves and we're also going to be wearing eye protection. In my case today, I'm just going to wear my normal glasses. Um, but if you are uh, doing this, you're probably going to also want to wear some clothes that you don't mind if they get ruined. I've never actually splashed this on myself, so I don't know if it would stain or ruin your clothes, but probably better safe than sorry. And also you want to do it in a well-ventilated area. When we did our horseshoe rack in the bathroom, we actually did it outside and it worked great. But today it's extremely windy and we really wanted to share the process with you. So we're doing it inside the RV with some windows cracked. And finally, if you do have kids or pets, just be a little extra careful around them when you're doing this project. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the material. All right, let's dive into these materials. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is your metal. So for us, it's going to be this horseshoe here. Um, now, there is a couple things we want to note here about the metal. Uh, generally, what you're going to want to do is get metal with iron in it because iron will corrode and rust and you'll be able to get that rusty patina. Now, there are some that you're going to want to avoid, such as galvanized metals or stainless steel. Those are specifically designed not to corrode or rust over time. Uh, the galvanizing process is actually where they use a zinc coating over the metal so that it's not able to rust the metal on the inside. So just some to keep in mind um, but if you do have some metal just lying around that uh, you're not sure what it is you can go ahead and give it this process and uh, if it works that's great if it doesn't well it's probably one of those metals that uh, is specifically designed not for that to happen but anyway let's move on the next thing you're going to need is distilled white vinegar um, your normal table salt some hydrogen peroxide a spray bottle a plastic container some paper towels, the gloves, which we mentioned earlier, and then also some sort of protectant if you're gonna be doing this inside so it doesn't leak down. And then also if you're gonna be taking this process, it's probably gonna be a good idea not to do it over existing metal that you wouldn't want to rust, just in case you do splash or spill a little bit on the sides. And then last but not least, you're gonna need some sort of sealer. So when we did it, we actually had uh, some of our spar urethane laying around, so we used this with a foam brush. Um, it might be a better option to use a spray sealer instead, because as you rub uh, this sealer onto your horseshoe, you may lose some of the uh, uh, look that you put on top of it. But other than that, let's go ahead and dive into how you make this process work. 
Let's get started making this metal rust. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. The first way we're gonna talk about is using a spray bottle. What you'll want to do is take your metal, put it into your plastic container, then grab your spray bottle. Now in your spray bottle, you're gonna, gonna want to have your vinegar, your hydrogen peroxide, and your table salt. To give you an idea, we did about one-third our vinegar, two-thirds our hydrogen peroxide, and then about a tablespoon of salt, and then you spray it down. Now to show you an example, over here we have one that we worked with just recently. And what we did is we took our spray bottle and we gave it a good spray down, let it sit for about five minutes, gave it another spray, let it sit for about another five minutes, and here's where, we're are, where we are. And to show you a comparison, here's what the original horseshoe looked like. So you can see just after 10 minutes, that's quite a bit of difference. Now, with this process, you can definitely make it your own. Uh, if this is too much for you, maybe only one application of your uh, solution should be good. Or if it's not enough, you can keep going and adding more. Uh, but once you get it to a stage where you like it, you're going to want to take your metal uh, and put it to the side and let it sit for about 24 hours to dry. Now what's important during this stage is you don't want to uh, touch it or be too rough with it because some of that patina may come off and uh, diminish the look but also may get on your skin or your clothes or anything like that. So just be careful with it at this stage. But after that 24 hours, go ahead and take your sealer, spray it down, and then your metal has now got the new rusty patina you're looking for. Here's another way to do it in case you don't have a spray bottle or if you just kind of want to watch it in front of your eyes. So what you do is you take your metal, you put it in your plastic container. And then you're going to take your vinegar and you want to pour it in until it's covering your metal. Now, we've actually already had a piece sitting over here on the side, so we're going to do a little mix up here. And we're going to bring it over here so you can see it. So this horseshoe has been sitting in this vinegar uh, solution for probably about 10 minutes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop it right out of there, give it a little shake, and we're going to move it over to our other plastic container. Get rid of this one. And now, we have our horseshoe, which has been soaking in the vinegar, and we're going to take our hydrogen peroxide, and we're just going to give it a little bit of a dousing over top. Now that we've got that in place, we're going to go ahead and take our salt, and I'm just going to dump a little in my hand here, and then do a little shake out. Maybe a little bit more, just for fun. And now that we've got that, we're looking at it and we're just gonna kinda judge by it. And this is the part where you really get to just have fun with the process. Um, it looks like now we're gonna add a little bit more peroxide. You can see the color definitely already coming out. Now, we just let it sit for about five minutes. Alright, so that's been sitting for about five minutes now, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper towel and we're going to dab the top of it, and uh, then we're going to take it out, dab the underneath, and put it right next to our spray bottle version. So we removed our horseshoe from the solution and put it off to the side. But before we removed it from the container, we took a paper towel and dabbed it on the top and the sides and the bottom a little bit just to soak up some of that uh, wetness. Now once you put it to the side, it is going to continue to dry and as it dries, it's going to continue to transform. So it's important to give it a little bit of time before you go to adding more so that you make sure you don't overdo it. 
Now over here you can see our spray bottle version and over here you can see our solution version. Now what's important to note here is that they do come out differently. Um, as far as me and Katie are concerned, they both are distinct, but they're both really awesome. So it's something you're gonna wanna toy around with and kind of find the look that uh, works best for you in your situation. Um, but it's also important to note that um, once it does dry and you get it looking the way that you want is to make sure to use that sealer. Uh, because what that's gonna do is once you put your metal out there, if you don't use a sealer, the rust is gonna kind of peel off and things like that. So if you bump into it, you may stain a shirt or um, anything like that. So just make sure to seal it at the end. Um, but other than that, that about wraps it up. We really hope that this video was helpful for you. Uh, make sure to check out the description box. We're going to have a link to our post on how to make metal rust, as well as a link to our horseshoe shelf in our RV bathroom. But if you guys have tried this technique or another technique to make metal rust, we'd definitely love to hear about that. And thank you much for swinging by today. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.